Progressive presents The Sounds of the Old World. The year is 2019, and someone is waiting for the previews to start in a movie theater. Hey, you want anything? Popcorn? Soda? No, nothing? This has been The Sounds of the Old World. Brought to you by Progressive, where drivers can still switch and save like it's 2019. Quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. It's been a whole year. Hard to believe, isn't it? We're down to the final race of the Formula One season. Let's do what we've been doing for the entire season. It's been so exciting. It's been so fun. Why the delay? Let's begin with the preview for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Man, it sucks to say that it's the season finale, but what a year it has been, Kunal, hasn't it? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Inside Line Formula One podcast and to Pitch to Podium on YouTube. Firstly, Kunal, what a year. Uh, It's hard to really realize that we're down to the very final race of the season and there are so many relations between teams and drivers that are going to be coming to a close here this weekend. Absolutely. It's it's great to have you. One of the last uh, uh, preview episodes that we will do for the 2020 Formula 1 season. But Somil, I really have to ask you, is it really been a year or is it just fantastic six months that we've had in <laughs> Formula One? Because we've had 17 races in six months. And I can tell you, it's been absolutely crazy. I think you and I have been recording every three days or four days, literally. And uh, overall, yes, it's been a challenging year for all of humanity. Okay. But hats off or helmets off to uh, all of Formula One for pulling off 17 races something that we almost thought would not happen given the pandemic that's still ongoing, Samuel. Absolutely. I mean, there were really big speculation and really big questions and perspective around, can F1 really do TV-only races? And we went ahead. It turned out to be a rather big success. So we've discovered that avenue. But here we are then, Kunal, back to... Sadly, the traditional final Grand Prix of the year. Uh, uh, you can see by the expression on my face that I'm not a very big Yas Marina fan. Or should we call them Yas Mercedes, Kunal? Because Kudos and Ityanan, who's just dug up the stats and found out that here, they've got a 100% victory record in the hybrid era. They've been fabulous and they seem to be <laughs> on track once again this weekend. Yes, they seem to be on track. They have their world champion driver back in the car. So... You know, George Russell's prayers have not been answered, if I may put it that way. (laughs) But uh, yes, Mercedes, it is. Samuel, they've led 88% of the laps at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in the hybrid turbo era. They've had six wins, six pole positions as well, three grand slams, and you name it. And, you know, it's the Middle Eastern races is where Mercedes is just so dominant. I remember the last time I had to really write down their stats was for the Bahrain Grand Prix because they were equally dominant in Bahrain as well. Exactly. That's just who Mercedes are. And speaking of stats, folks, if you want more, which you know, which we know for a fact that you love to, pitchthepodium.com, we've got an exclusive stats section with both Nityanand and Sundaram, our colleagues, digging up and finding some excellent stuff. Honestly, I'm not just being biased. Even if I wasn't a part of Pitch to Podium, hard to imagine that, but I would still be fascinated by those stats. You've got to go in, have a look. We're putting a link down in the description for that. But let's get back to Yas Marina Kunal. Uh, it's a circuit that divides opinion, but more than the circuit, I think the narrative here this weekend is going to be about the stories, isn't it? Because so many big partnerships that have been around for so many years have produced such epic memories all coming to a close. So many to begin with. In fact, the first one uh, can be seen by the color of my shirt here today. I just felt a bit emotional. Sergio Perez and Racing Point, they've been together for six years. You have Sebastian Vettel, who's going to Aston Martin after a long relationship with Ferrari. There are so many more, Kunal. It's it's just going to be a very emotional weekend for teams and drivers all around. 
Yes, it is. It's going to be a very emotional weekend. But, you know, since we are going to do this whole segment of last race for, and then we are just going to fill in the blanks for each. <laughs> I really wish this was the last race at Abu Dhabi. Although, you know, the, the money is extremely welcome to Formula One. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I think the off-circuit facilities are brilliant. I've had the privilege of attending races there as a Force India Formula One team member. Okay. And it's 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 at another level. The opulence is at another level. Okay. But the racing, not nothing spectacular, I'd say. And, you know, I've, I've, I'd, I'd say, okay, some races like Abu Dhabi should probably not be the season ending races. I, you know, shift back to what we had at Interlagos in, in Brazil. But, you know, I don't make Formula One calendars. And I know <laughs> I definitely don't earn the money that, you know, Formula One does with, with Abu Dhabi being there. So, uh, yeah, that, that's just how it goes. And Checo Perez, uh, since you mentioned, I have an interesting question to ask you, Samuel, right? Uh-huh. So, we all know that Perez is going to be uh, without a seat, at least as of uh, this weekend, uh, you know, uh, for 2021. But what are the chances if he, could res- if he could return to Formula One in 2022 with Racing Point, or then will be called the Aston Martin Formula One team, what if... Sebastian Vettel is not able to find his form at Aston Martin in 2021. You never know, honestly. And you will be the first person to come up to your viewer and say, Sebastian Vettel has a long-term contract. Uh, From what I've heard, it's a two-year contract. But at the end of the day, if you're willing enough, it's just a piece of paper. If you're willing enough, that is. If, If you're willing to go to the lens, just ask Michael Schumacher from 1991 about that. So... Yeah, it could very well happen, Kunal. Who knows? Uh, We were discussing right before starting out that we could very well see a situation of Sebastian Vettel coming back to Ferrari, much like Kimi Raikkonen, because let's be honest, Vettel hasn't lost his love for the sport. If anything, he could reignite it at Racing Point. Anything could happen at the end of the day, couldn't it? Uh, We we would never have any idea that Kimi Raikkonen in 2009 would end up going rallying in NASCAR then come back through a team called Lotus, which hadn't been on the grid since the, what, 80s, and then come back to Ferrari and take one solitary win. Life can take you multiple places, Kunal. Could Absolutely. be going a long way for Sebastian Vettel as well. Just throwing it, it up in the air. <laughs> yeah, just throwing it there. And we can say, we told you so, if it at all and ever happens. <laughs> it's been a messy divorce. It's been fairly public. Not so much so with, uh, you know, with washing dirty linen, just a lot of dirty results, I would say, and pit stops for Ferrari and Fettel. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a good question. Uh, we have Carlos Sainz Jr. who's going to take, uh, you know, the, the Vettel's place at Ferrari, as we know. So his last race with McLaren. Daniel Ricciardo's last w- race with Renault. He's going to move on to, uh, you know, McLaren next year. Uh, speaking of that, Renault's last race as Renault as well. Coincidentally, mm-hmm. it happens to be their 400th Grand Prix in Formula One in the 43 years that they've been around as a team and as uh, you know an engine manufacturer. So they're going to be called Alpine or Alpine, depend, depending on the pronunciation that you prefer. And similarly, Racing Point are now going to be rebranded as Aston Martin Formula One team. Absolutely. And what a way to go out for the Renault brand. 400 races, 400 Grand Prix. That's quite the achievement when you come to think of it. And they've had some excellent history as well. But it's going to be a bit of a tricky weekend, Kunal, because there are going to be lots of goodbyes being said around the grid. Could very well be the last weekend for Danny Kefir as well. Almost signed, seen and delivered. We're just, we're just waiting pretty much for Yuki Sonora's announcement. announcement. Monday could be the day for that one. But uh, this aside... The emotional element of Saikunal, the teams and drivers will still be focusing very well on the weekend up ahead. And one driver who we are going to focus on right now, just for a bit, is going to be Lewis Hamilton. He, of course, had the virus. Some drivers have recovered extremely well. Lance Stroll, for that matter. Sergio Perez, physically extremely fit. But there were rumors or, let's say, murmurs around that Lewis Hamilton wasn't doing particularly well. He's fine now. He's going to be back in the car tomorrow for first free practice. Uh, what do you expect if you if you expect anything? Uh, do you think he's going to come back even stronger being Lewis Hamilton the way he is? I think it's a brilliant headline for Formula One, right? World champion, hits COVID, recovers, comes back and wins another race. Puts it on pole <laughs> another time. Scores Mercedes' fourth Grand Slam at, at the same circuit. So 
I don't expect Lewis Hamilton to have lost any of his pace and his determination to just go out there and be racy and win. And, uh, you know, uh, also sort of will want to stamp his, uh, you know, authority back on the sport saying COVID, pre-COVID, post-COVID, I'm still the best driver that's there in Formula yep. One. But Samuel, I don't think that FP1 is going to be remembered for Lewis Hamilton's comeback. I think yes. the FP1 yes. is definitely going to be the most followed FP1 in a, since a long, long time because the Schumacher surname is coming back to Formula 1 and finally Mick Schumacher is going to be making his debut with the Haas Formula 1 team. We've got goosebumps all around. And you know the best part, Kunal? The way they've worked this round, it's not that it's Mick Schumacher written on the car. They've played it very cleverly, this one. If you look at the car, it says M. Schumacher. We're putting too much pressure on the kid, mind you. We shouldn't be doing that. But <laughs> it's just the emotional element attached to it. You can't, you can't help it. But think about the great Michael Schumacher, can you? It's so good not to see just Schumacher, but M. Schumacher with the German flag. Man, I'm pumped up already. If you can't see, by the way, I'm speaking. It should be so much fun. Again, we can all come back to the point of saying it's not the best team in the world to start out a career with. If anything, could be a, a bit of a swamp to begin with. You already have got murky and muddy waters. Trying to get your feet out of that can be tricky, but if he can prove himself here, he's got a long way up ahead with Ferrari's hand almost always behind him. But that's going to be fun, Kunal. There have been <laughs> quite a few things being said about his teammate for next year, Nikita Mazabin, which we shall discuss later on. But let's jump all the way back to the top of the grid because Yasmin, of course, as we discussed, is known to be Yas Mercedes. And if you like 90-degree things in your life, then you should like the circuit quite a bit. But Red Bull have not had a particularly great track record here since the hybrid era began. In fact, I think Nitin and also pulled out this lovely Saturn in our pre-race preview that Red Bull had won the first three of the five races here at Yas Marina, one of which was the Bastian Vettel's championship winning one in 2010. Since then, it's all gone downhill, but did you reckon they've got one last big punch in the bag after Silverstone with Verstappen coming in and doing something special here? I, I mean, I would, I would reckon, you know, I don't think Max Verstappen ever goes down without a fight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'd be really upset with how he was taken out in, in Sakhir and, you know, he'll want to bounce back. Uh, like you said, lots of, uh, uh, you know, lots of 90 degree corners and, you know, it should sort of suit the Red Bull because the fast way around, uh, Alpha, uh, you know, uh, the fast way around Abu Dhabi is to maximize low corner, uh, mm. you know, l- low speed corners that you get. So traction is going to be crucial. Uh, you know, the, the team that wins will want to show that, hey, we are going to carry all the momentum into winter and all of that. And uh, just take take things from there. So, you know, he'll, he'll definitely want to take the fight to Mercedes to show, a, hey, this is how 2020 has been for me. I've always been P3. I've taken the P3 chair at home for the weekend. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm still trying to gun for both the Mercedes drivers if I definitely can. And honestly, the, 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 the focus on Red Bull is going to be for who Verstappen's teammate is going to be for 2020 because yeah. you know Perez's win just put so much pressure on Formula 1 on Liberty Media and on Red Bull Racing okay to say hey can we really ignore this guy and can we mm-hmm. really still justify on all sporting grounds that Alexander Albin deserves to be in that seat in 2021 ah uh. You've really dropped the ball on this one, Kunal. You've opened up a big, big closet full of thoughts. When you come to think of it, Sergio Perez brings, at least for now, okay, Albon is a talent for the future. Not saying that Perez isn't, but you, you kind of get an idea that he has a longer shelf life in store. Perez, not only right now, seems to be the faster driver. Again, I use seems to be because you never know with Formula 1. Sometimes it can be the car, sometimes it can be other things. But today... As of right now, Perez seems to be the one with the upper hand on the track. And he brings a whole country with him. Not that Albon doesn't, but the Mexican Formula One viewership, the Hispanic Formula One viewership, simply cannot be ignored. And he also brings sponsors in, in the form of Telcel and many others. And just having Red Bull have a greater presence in Mexico with 
it's safe to say that Sergio Perez is a Mexican icon of sport, not just a hero. It just all sinks in very well, but yeah, it's, it's not seeming to be the brightest of things for Sergio, is it, in terms of how the rumors are flowing around? Well, you know, talking of countries, I'm not sure if Mexico is more important for Red Bull or Thailand is, as you'd exactly. imagine, given how Albin comes from his, you know, his half Brit and half Thai, and he is backed by the other, uh, you know, family that owns Red Bull along with Dietrich. Okay, mm-hmm. so let's see how it goes. But crucially, what you mentioned is he uh, he earns a lot of money in the Constructors' Championship through earning all the points or scoring all the points, Okay. But more importantly, he also brings all that sponsorship with him by virtue of being one of the most popular Mexican athletes, right? And could Red Bull make use of that money in funding the Honda IP development program and and the like? So lots of things, uh, you know, that, that Perez brings to the table, which is just so hard to ignore. And, you know, Rajan Daware, one of, one of our listeners, he made an interesting statement that you put Perez in the Red Bull racing car and there's a good chance that Max Verstappen might come crashing down to ground because he'll have just such a strong teammate. That should be so much fun. I can't wait for the season preview that we're going to have on Pitch the Podium to discuss the idea of the Honda IP, to discuss the idea of Verstappen having a really cutthroat teammate because there, I'm not saying that we know completely for sure, but it seems like it's very aligned towards one man. The atmosphere, it it may not be directly that way, but it's somewhat created to favor, not favor, but he's just made it that way. There is this imposing look from the outside that this is Max Verstappen's team. Nobody else can be allowed to be comfortable here. But when you have a proper stalwart like Sergio Perez coming in, Expect a few fireworks. When fireworks can also be expected in the battle for P3, because that was something that we discussed at the end of the last race, Kunal. Uh, we both had big smiles on our faces looking at this big competitive thing that's going to come up. 10 points, the difference between Racing Point and McLaren. 10 points, even after a 1 3 finish. McLaren are just 10 points behind Racing Point, right here coming into this one. Renault are very, very big outsiders, but it's a two way shot to the finish. Now then, from the looks of things, the W11 was very nice at, at Abu Dhabi last year. And <laughs> McLaren also have been doing an excellent job in terms of just maximizing every point scoring opportunity. At last, in the Pitch to Podium Grand Prix prediction competition, who gets your vote for the best of the rest this time on? I would go with Racing Point, Somal, and that's just another way of but proving connections? that. Just- well, personal connections, yes, maybe, okay. But just another way of proving, you know, uh, that Mercedes have been so dominant in 2020 that they have not only won, uh, you know, races in the W11, they've also won races in the W10 or whatever those, you know, the car from this year and the car from last year. So just goes to show that, it's been such a dominant performance by Mercedes. But yes, that aside, I would say Racing Point is, you know, who's going to have 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 my uh, vote. I would love to see what Perez is able to do with the momentum that he's been carrying ever since, you know, it was, he probably knew that he's going to be without a seat in 2021. Hmm. And if there was ever an advertisement that a driver would have put out to say, hey, I am this talented and this is what I can do. I think there can't be better than what Checo Perez has done in 2020. Ah, man. <laughs> that, that thing will just keep on flowing, won't it? We, we just can't stop talking about it after last weekend. What a performance. What an emotional victory it was. Oof. <laughs> Too many thoughts. Too many thoughts to control <laughs> for one thing. We shall discuss this in more depth in the postseason review and the preseason one, depending if Checo is there. Fingers crossed. Hopefully he gets that seat, but... I'm pumped up. But on the whole, McLaren also have got a very, very strong driver lineup. Critically, Kunal, I remember you mentioning, I think in the Nürburgring preview a few months ago, that McLaren don't have a lopsided team. It's all perfectly balanced in terms of the drivers. Both of them are going out there, standing out and delivering. And if something doesn't go wrong for the usual top three, it could be very, very hard for a racing point to just get a big result and secure that 10-point lead and just make sure that it's there because McLaren, they're going to be scoring with two drivers for sure. And Racing Point just have a little bit of 
the uncertainty regarding Lance Stroll out there. So it just promises to be a very good finish. It does. And, you know, uh, Renault outside chance, Esteban Ocon again, P2 exactly. will sort of take a lot of pressure off his shoulders and it could show in his driving as well. And interestingly, you know, and this is again from our Pits to Podium stats review, Ferrari have not won in Abu Dhabi or in the UAE for that matter. Okay, it's one of six countries that Ferrari are yet to win a race in despite being around for 70 years. Okay, so it all goes to see how good they or or average will they be at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and just what they are going to be able to pull off with Sebastian Vettel. And, you know, I've loved the farewells that Ferrari have hosted for their drivers. We still remember how, you know, Felipe Massa had a, had a, yes. had a trophy or a cup that was sort of taller than him, uh, you know, in size. So I'd love to see how they are going to commemorate Vettel in real life. Of course, they've been doing a lot on social media. But all these farewells, I'm most excited about what Ferrari does for Vettel. But you never know with the Ferrari hostility as well. It could be the most beautiful favor in the world coming from Ferrari. Could be the worst as well. Acrimony is something that Ferrari is used to quite a bit. And considering that Vettel hasn't won a championship and the farewell with Alonso wasn't very pretty, you, you, let's not keep any expectations in that department. <laughs> Let, let's not go down that route. But now that you've said, Kunal, that Ferrari, this one, is one of six countries where they haven't won, what are the other five? India is one, for sure. That's one that stays on top of my <laughs> mind because we went to the Indian GP. But uh, they've won in Azerbaijan. Where else have they not won? Could South Korea be one of them? South, no. Fernando Alonso, 2010 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. That's my wallpaper. I will never change it. It's the most <laughs> beautiful photo in the world. They've won in South Korea. Uh, where else? Well, wasn't that after Fettel had a car failure, Alto? And Weber went in the, in the mud. Yes, that, yes. that race. Crazy yes. one. <laughs> I can't remember which are the other... Russia. Uh, Russia is second. Are you sure? Russia? Yeah. Okay. They, they, they've never won. It's only It's been a Mercedes clean sweep all the time yes. there in Russia. So you, you've got three more to go. And if you don't get it, we'll, we'll definitely get <laughs> Nityanand and Sundaram to dig in and put it in their post-race review stats piece. <laughs> Should be fun. Watch out for that one in the midweek. And um, finally, you can all, just before we wrap off, uh, we've already had our predictions to the Grand Prix prediction competition in place. Strategy could be interesting. Uh, do, do you reckon teams could go for a one-stopper here? Of course, being in the night, it's going to be a lot cooler. But it's always the Middle East, so th that could fluctuate things a little bit this time out. Well, you know, given that Formula 1 is desperately trying to make Abu Dhabi an exciting race, okay, mm. uh, Pirelli have brought their C5, or their softest tyre compound, to this weekend. And I think it's appeared just once before. I think it was in Russia when it was there. Hmm. So, you know, a one stopper is always what the teams try. That's usually the default, right? Mm -hmm. But given that it's a softer range of compounds, maybe a two stopper could be there. But, you know, we've seen before that just because it's a two stopping race doesn't mean it has to be exciting by itself. You cannot take away from the fact that the biggest excitement Formula One can offer is when cars actually battle each other on track and not necessarily exactly. only in the pit lane. So, you know, strategy-wise, that's it'll be interesting to see what C5 does for for you know from a Pirelli and, and a Formula One perspective. Exactly. I'm afraid don't expect much in terms of battles on track because again, if you love 90 degrees, this place is for you. But good racing does not love 90 degree corners. So that could be a bit of an issue this weekend. But nevertheless. Hopefully, our expectations are, let's say, uh, the, the, let's say the race hopefully goes beyond our expectations. We've seen it happen uh, before, but that was the championship deciders. I, I, I'm just looping it around to say that it's not going to be the best race in the world. <laughs> Long story short, don't expect much. Still, folks, should be a fun one to see how the narratives play out. If anything, if we're not going to get good side-by-side -side action, we're definitely going to see lots of interesting stories coming to a close that right here. And that should be one big reason to watch the Grand Prix. And also, in case you like this video, folks, you know what to do. Leave a like, share this video with your friends and family members, subscribe to Pitch the Podium, ring the bell, not the wrestling one, ring the bell so that you know when the next video comes out. That's going to be on Sunday night. That's going to be our final season debrief for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. That's going to be a lot of fun. And finally, Kunal, 
anything special in store from Abu Dhabi? Any one thing that you'd love to speak about before we go? Well, I'd love to see what Pietro Fittipaldi is able to do. Exactly. Okay, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised that he's racing, and uh, you know, and and the fact that Mick Schumacher has actually taken Kevin Magnussen's seat, right? So hmm. Haas's driver pairings have money written all over it, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And you know, I would even go as far to ask the question as to why is Mick Schumacher not driving a Grand Prix instead of Pietro Fittipaldi. You know, we would yeah. have loved, we would have gotten to see Mick alongside Mark Newson. Interesting to compare him with somebody as as experienced and just get Mick to, you know, experience a Grand Prix weekend before a Grand Prix weekend actually happens. Because, you know, as we've seen, it's going to be only three days of preseason testing and, and so on for 2021. So there it goes. You know, I'm I'm excited to see what Pietro is able to do because, in the short lap in in Bahrain, he was you know just about seven tenths off, and I'd love to see how far away may or may not be from uh, you know Schumacher and then Mark Newson this weekend, and then of course like we started off saying the emotional moment of seeing a, a Schumacher name return to Formula One that's going to be one of my highlights. Absolutely, and also folks, watch out for George Russell because he's going to be back in the Williams. After a world of experience in the Mercedes. Now, you might be asking, why am I emphasizing on the word world of experience? Because it's a completely different world in the Mercedes altogether. So much faster. He's going to have so much more knowledge this time out about how to go. And it may just be one race. But you kind of get a feeling that he's going to be a far more mature driver considering the circumstances that just took place. So keep a keen eye on what he's able to do back in the Williams. But as always, folks, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. You know what to do and stay tuned on Sunday evening right here on Pitch the Podium for our post-race debrief. Once again, folks, one last time, a very, very emotional goodbye from our five things to watch out for video and see you on Sunday. Bye, Kunal. See you. Thank you, Samil, and see you guys. Enjoy the last race of the season. Bye.